Today, the Carolina Panthers open up the regular season in California with a matchup against the San Francisco 49ers. They were victorious. The final score in this game was Carolina Panthers 23, San Francisco 49ers 3. And I will say this, this could have been and should have been a shutout because the Carolina, I'm sorry, the San Francisco 49ers made a field goal after going for it on fourth down, getting a penalty, getting pushed back, and uh, the coach decided to go for the field goal, they made it. So nevertheless, the Panthers start off the season one and zero, play again next week in Carolina against Sean McDermott, the former defensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers. We'll be there to cover that game as well. But I want to give you guys some quick thoughts. I'm going to go through three thoughts from the game today. And uh, please join me tomorrow. Well, I can't say join me, but tomorrow, we're going to do a more extended version of a recap from the game yesterday and also talk about what this team looks like in the future. I will be having guests on the show all year long. Excited to have my first guest, Pat Coltrane. If you haven't seen this guy before on YouTube, you're gonna see him tomorrow. You're gonna see him on, on our channel. Great guy, but let me go ahead and get into some three points that I wanna talk about from the, the, today's matchup with the San Francisco 49ers. First, I'm gonna talk about the one and only, the guy with the shoulder who only threw two passes in the preseason, Cam Newton. And in that first half, he looked like he had only thrown two passes all preseason and, and as it was going on that first half I didn't at all think that man he's sore or man he's bad I just thought about the fact that the guy did not have many reps at all I remember many times with Cam Newton watching Spartanburg <clears throat> how he didn't practice for you know three four or five days sometimes and then how he only threw two passes <clears throat> my question for Cam that I'm gonna wonder is how sore is he after this first game and how much he practices this upcoming week Still don't think, I'm sorry, getting choked up, I need some water. Still don't think that he's gonna be affected. I think that he's recovered and they're doing the right things to keep, you know, take it slow with him. But that first half, five of 13 with a 47.9 passer rating. Accuracy was all over the place, missing Ed Dixon horribly on one play. Uh, someone online wanted me to talk about the interception. I don't think that one was so bad, but uh, certainly the San Francisco 49ers made an excellent play to get that one-handed interception. But again, he finished a lot stronger. Second half, to overall he finished 14 of 25, two touchdowns, one interception, threw for 171 yards. All right, now I'm gonna talk about Christian McCaffrey, who I said I was gonna rant about. This is why I am going to rant about Christian McCaffrey. Two things we're gonna talk about. One is his number of touches, which I think was crazy. I still think, I've always wanted Jonathan Stewart to have some balance with, his, uh, with some other guy. But I didn't want him to go from what seemed like a 90% of the carries to what, I don't know, seemed like, I could probably do the math and really figure it out, but seemed like, you know, if the game had a not been uh, so lot one side, I don't know if he would have had 25% of the carries. But McCaffrey finished the day with 13 rushes, 47 yards, five receptions, 38 yards, three punts for seven yards. And I'm just surprised at how many touches he was getting in that first half. Really feeling like Stewart is a guy that's used to getting the ball a lot and certainly builds up steam, runs really well, gets a lot of yards. I think he's leading the league or close to leading the league with yards after the touch. He's still a really powerful one runner. And I, I don't think we need to just totally put that on the shelf and say, <clears throat> just when we get in the red zone, we're gonna put Stewart out there. But we'll keep an eye out on it. But here's the rant. In the first half, I saw them stripping the ball from McCaffrey, like playing after the whistle. And I so immediately felt like that was a rookie thing. They're like, hey, you know, rookie, welcome to the league. Hold on to the ball. And I was hoping, I said it on Twitter, somebody talked to this guy at the half and remind him that they are really trying to teach you a lesson and strip this ball away and don't want it to happen. Sure enough, it happened in the second half. I'm not alarmed. I don't think he's going to become this big fumbler. But I just wanted him to have that mentality that, hey, you're a rookie, and they're, they're really trying to go after that ball and just Hold on to it a little bit tighter, but welcome to the NFL. He got that first game over, and he, he's one of those uh, professionals. Got his dad in the league. I'm sure his dad is going to be on the phone with him, talking to him, get him straight. Lastly, Graham Gano. I admit to you guys, I'm one of the most soft reporters out there. I get, you know, had these little personal relationships with these guys. Hate to report on negative stuff. So who am I going to talk about? Graham Gano, I was nervous for him all day because one thing I've thought about is they're keeping two kickers trying to trade one. You don't really know who it is. You, you, there's been some reports that it's Gano. But if Gano misses, 
Some field goals, you know he's not going to be trade bait, right? You know, who's going to want the guy? They're going to say, no, I'm not trading for him. He's missing. You don't even want him. You don't need him. So I was glad that he not only made all of his field goal attempts today, he made them straight down the center. He was uh, three for three on field goals, two for two on extra points. And as usual, he was kicking the ball very deep on the kickoffs and did well. So that's my quick report for today. If you haven't subscribe to the video, please do so. Like the video, leave your comments below. If you have any questions for me and uh, Cole Train to talk about tomorrow, just leave a comment, send it to me on Twitter. I really, really want to work for you guys this year. So I really like to engage and get, and get some, some questions back from you. That's all for today. It's Chris Jenkins for charlottevibe.com.